Welcome to Employment Law This Week. I'm George Whipple. Employers are facing a wave of new regulations and limitations on non-compete agreements at the state level and increased focus on them at the federal level. Navigating these regulations is a challenge for all employers, but particularly those operating in multiple states or employing remote workers. Epstein Becker Green's Eric Wybust is here with more. Non-competes have been governed by state law for over 200 years and only recently came seriously within the crosshairs of the federal government. In 2021, the Biden administration issued an executive order on protecting competition in the American economy. That did not ban non-competes, as he had promised to do on his campaign, nor did it even instruct the FTC to regulate them. Rather, it merely encouraged the FTC to consider exercising its statutory rulemaking authority to curtail the use of unfair non-compete clauses that may unfairly limit worker mobility. Nothing of note has happened at the federal level since the Biden administration issued the executive order. There has been a lot of action in the states over the past few years. Indeed, this year alone, 22 states have introduced 67 bills addressing non-competes. In addition, over the past two to three years, Several states, including Oregon, Washington, Illinois, and Massachusetts, have all enacted legislation setting wage floors or limiting the enforceability of non-competes against low-wage workers. This is a very hot topic, and it's far less controversial than banning non-competes outright, and you'll find uh, proponents of this on both sides of the aisle. Nationwide employers can use a single agreement with appendices and carve-outs if that's their preference, but that could quickly become confusing and increase the risk of human error, as well as the cost of implementing, drafting, and enforcing such agreements. Another approach is for employers to consider which employees they're having signed non-competes, whether it's based on their level, perhaps only director or vice president level and above, their access to confidential information, trade secrets, and customer relationships, their duties, and the like. By narrowing the number of employees who are subject to restricted covenants, Naturally, you'd narrow the number of states whose laws you have to comply with. Alternative to traditional non-competes include confidentiality provisions or non-disclosure agreements, as well as customer and employee non-solicitation provisions. Less common, but nevertheless effective, are garden leave provisions in which an employee is paid to sit on the sidelines for a certain amount of time. These are very common in Europe. And forfeiture for competition clauses, in which there are financial consequences should the employee decide to compete. Thanks, Eric, and thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.